I think Will Smith did a good job in this movie. What did you know about the Nation of Islam before watching that film? <laughs> the Nation of Islam being the Islamic sect that are black nationalist, black separatist. That was Muhammad Ali's first encounter with Islam when he was close with Malcolm X, who was a member of the Nation of Islam at the time, who followed Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam. To be honest, I've always wanted to read about Malcolm X. I was not sure that they were um, exclusive in a way. Um, that cleared out on, on the movie that if you do go out from certain rules within the group, you no longer belongs to them, so you're out. Where Islam should be, shouldn't be like this, you know, like no one can tell you you are Muslim and now you're out of it, you know? Yeah, so okay. early on in the movie, Malcolm X is excommunicated from the Nation of Islam and kicked out, as you say. He was drifting towards mainstream Islam, having been on Hajj and seeing Muslims of every different colour and nationality coming together. This was at odds with the teachings of the Nation of Islam, which was about the black man being the real human being on earth, about white people being like a sick race. They believe that the white race was created by an evil scientist called Yakub, who lived on an island, uh, supposedly the island of Patmos, and he bred weak people and lighter-skinned people until he sort of eugenically came up with the white race and they were evil and they talked about them being blue-eyed devils. So this was a form of Islam that cropped up, I think, early 20th century, maybe late 19th century, when there were a lot of new ideas, various people in different parts of the world that emerged and said, I'm the, I'm the Mahdi or I'm the return of Jesus. When all this was happening and the reawakening of um, black consciousness, Marcus Garvey writing uh, and appealing to black people as kind of part of the African uh, diaspora, and there were some ideologies that emerged where black people were harking back to the Israelites and saying, just as the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, we were enslaved in Africa and we're looking for someone to free us. So that's kind of like an Israelite identity. Other ideologies, such as the Nation of Islam, such as the Temple of Moorish Science, harking back to an Islamic ancestry and many of the slaves taken from West Africa would have been of a Muslim background and that's why, as you saw in the movie, he goes from being Cassius X and Malcolm X, removing the white person's name, surname, to eventually choosing an Islamic name and in the Nation of Islam they give you the name. And they told he didn't choose the name and say, I'm going to be Muhammad Ali. They told him, you will be known as Muhammad Ali. Yeah, you I didn't will be know known that. as such and such. I actually thought Muhammad Ali chose the name Muhammad Ali. As I understand it, if the film is accurate, the sect choose a name for you. That's quite controlling in itself. Of course. I mean, look, religion can give people power. Some people seek religion to become powerful. Mm. They lose the actual sense of religion, which is sure. being spiritual. Well, I, I don't want right? to slate the, the, the Nation of Islam. I've met, no, no, but I was I've just met talking Le about Leo religion. Muhammad from the Nation of Islam in this, uh, in this country, and he was very nice to me. I mean, look, black community have suffered, suffered, suffered quite a lot. Like, we can't imagine how... They were, you know, what they went through, uh, their feelings and so on. So if they would hold together and be a community and, you know, name it something, 
then they would do that to you know to have the strength and power and and regain their status if you know what i mean back then so with groups that suffers a lot sometimes i don't know if i can blame them you know to have these sort of understanding what Malcolm X did trying to join the mainstream made more sense because he's seen what happens in Hajj and Hajj is the one one I mean the last pillar of Islam if you're able to do it which gives you a clear idea when you go there to see that actually Islam is for everybody it's not only for one nation it's not for one color Malcolm X or Malik Shabazz as he was also known embraced that version of mainstream Islam I think only in the last possibly few months of his life at least a year I think he was and that's what got him killed many of the modern followers of the nation of Islam certainly would regret anything like that that happened back then and we can't blame them for things that happened in the in the past I mean when uh nation of Islam came to Rumi's cave Rakin made quite a bold statement to say we shouldn't divide and argue over little differences we should look at what we have in common and that that is quite a big statement to make when a lot of people are very quick to say the so-and-so is non-muslim like what you saw in the film a lot of people from mainstream islam are very quick to dismiss nation of islam as non-Muslims because they have views that might put them outside the fold of Islam. Maybe, maybe it does, but you can still look for some common ground. They but, still believe uh, in many of the same things, even if they, you could say you consider them misguided on other issues. Look, no one should be judging anybody, honestly. Like, if you want to be a true to religious person or have a you know, certain belief, you should not be judging other people you should really focus on yourself i remember uh, an experience once that i had i was working in a place and i started praying and my colleague prayed next to me and then suddenly i see her movements quite different in the prayer i was leading the prayer i wasn't sure what she was doing this was my first time to pray next to a shia i didn't know they prayed differently than us okay. And then once I finished praying, I said, uh, we clearly <laughs> prayed <laughs> quite differently. <laughs> Both of us, she said, uh, I'm Shia and clearly you're Sunni. I said, yes. That really didn't stop us from praying, you know, at the same time. Uh, we She prayed different, I prayed differently, but at the same time, we both were fasting. So we did, when you see, when you said, you see the similarity, you see the yeah. common things between you and don't have to judge one another of, oh, you are this or you are yeah. that, I can't pray next to you, I can't do this, I can't. There's quite a famous video of a Jewish guy entering a mosque and saying, may I pray in your mosque? And everyone says, yes, you're welcome. And as a Jew, he's happy to pray in a mosque because the Jews, the consensus is they consider Muslims to be monotheists like themselves whereas they would might be dubious about praying in a church if Christians are insisting on the trinity meaning God is three in one Jews might have a problem with that they don't have a problem with the Islamic concept of Tawheed God is one as it says in the Bible going back to Muhammad Ali um, there was also they showed at the end of the movie that the nation of Islam came back to him and said to him, oh, now you are back to the group in a way. Yeah. He refused to join them. He said, you know, I've always been Muslim. So it's not, it's not because you dismissed me from the group. Uh, I'm no longer Muslim. I'm Muslim and I'm still Muslim. I'm champion and I'm still world champion. Like, I sort of respect that about Muhammad Ali to, to be, you know, to have this sort of personality you don't decide for me who I am, you know, like, and whatever he's seen himself, he actually achieved it. He said to himself, I'm the champion and he came back for the title. 